Hello there, Rebel Rooster Modeling viewers. Long time no see. Good old Terry here in uh, my garage out here at Hell's Armpit. Working on this little uh, Edward D3. And um, as you know, those World War I airplanes were made with no small amount of wood. And um, as a result, there's no small amount of wood that we've got to make out of all this plastic here. So let's really quickly go through how to simulate wood on a plastic model. Now this ain't going to be the best, there's people who are better than me this, but uh, trust me, I am an amateur. So uh, let's okay. get into it. So we're it. going to be doing both our propeller and some uh, wing braces today, okay? And they're going to need different techniques. Um, and we'll go through each one separately. And what we're going to need, come here pointing pencil, are two shades of your base colors and I just use Tamiya acrylics for this. You can use lacquers, whatever you want. I just find these easy. And I've got XF78 uh, wooden deck tan. That's going to be the base first color applied. And then I've got XF64 red brown. That'll be another color applied. And then I'm going to take an oil color and I'm using raw umber here. And then the secret ingredient that really makes that wood look like wood in the end is uh, some X24 clear yellow. Some people like to use the clear orange. Um, that's also fine. It's all your personal taste. I kind of like the yellow. Um, but, you know, try them all out. See what you like best. Uh, you'll need some thinner for the acrylics. And I like to use the uh, Mr. Rapid thinner for these because I don't care if these really look flattish and I don't want to wait for them to level out. Um, every time I apply a coat, uh, you'll need some mineral spirits. Uh, you folks over on the other side of the world, you call those white spirits, I suppose, uh, to thin out your um, your oil paints if you're going to do any thinning on it. We'll see how that goes. I usually don't, but some do. Uh, and then I use for the uh, clear yellow, I use the Mr. Leveling Thinner for that. Uh, this isn't the Mr. Leveling Thinner bottle, it's just the bottle I stuck it in. And the same with the Mr. Uh, Rapido over here. I just stuck it in my own bottle. But anyway. And then I, you'll need a few paint brushes. Um, they say the, you know, there's people who are really crazy about brushes. I just got what I got. I make do with them. Um, but anyway. Excuse me, uh, spit bubble. <laughs> Let's get started on this. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our wooden deck tan and uh, put that in the airbrush and we're just going to shoot the propeller like you would anything else. Let me turn the fan on, get ready. It's going to be loud. Cover your ears. We've all done this. Everybody knows how to paint, so uh, I'll just make this quick and Anyway, make sure to get your tips. Um, what I do is I just turn this propeller every which way but loose and I make sure to hit the whole thing color. Here we are. Step one is done. I turn this off. The thing I neglected to mention earlier is because we're going to be layering colors on top of each other and we don't really want them to blend in too much, we want them to kind of streak along and make what's what's simulating the grain of wood is um, I put a coat of clear between each one. Now you can pick your clear. I use X22 because I can, it's easy to clean up out of the brush strictly. But um, you want to have lines in this, um, I guess kind of like brush strokes, if you will, without the without the vertical buildup on them. You just, you're gonna wanna kinda see lines in there when you're simulating the grain in wood. So uh, by putting a clear coat on it, that's going to make that easier uh, than without because otherwise they're going to kind of like spread out and soak into each other. Each color layer will. So I'm not going to show you the clear coating. Everybody knows how to apply that here. So I'm just going to uh, pick up the next step, which would be step three. Coming right up. Right, now what I've done here is I've taken a little bit of those two shades of brown and I put them in a tray with a little bit of Mr. Leveling Thinner. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix these two together. I don't have any magic ratio or formula, all right, for this. I just want something a little darker than just that wood deck tan, but not too much. 
can see right now, and I need a little more of that uh, dark brown, just a little bit. So let's take a drop of this, uh, like so. There we are. Let's throw another. Let's throw another two drops in there, huh? There we are. So I'm gonna mix this up a little more. But what I'm doing. I'm not, making, I'm, not making, I'm not letting it get completely mixed in there. You see those streaks? I kind of want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the first of my brushes. And that'll be this one here. It doesn't really matter. It's just depending on your hand and what you like to do. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to slowly stroke that over the propeller tip here. I'm trying to keep this in the camera for you. And that little bit of dark with those streaks in it is going to be uneven. And this is what I want to do. I want it to look like that. I don't want this to be uniform. Like you would with, say, a black propeller. Do a little more. Do it along the back here. Because remember, we want lines to simulate wood grain. Bring that all the way up to the hub here. Okay. And I'm gonna let that dry a while and we'll be right back. Now, with while you. we're waiting for this to dry, let me see if I can get this a little closer for you. You can kind of see those lines in there kind of start to look a little bit like wood grain. Uh, and I used a little bit, I mixed that with just a little bit, tiny bit, almost insignificant amount of Mr. Rapid Thinner because I want that to dry pretty fast um, when it gets on that propeller to keep those lines instead of leveling out and becoming one big dark color. Now these propellers were often laminated, well they were almost always laminated, they were laminated wood. Um, so we're going to cut very thin strips of tape here and then we're going to put those on the propeller. So we're gonna take these little tiny thin strips of tape and yeah, I know to me it sells half millimeter and all that other stuff, but I kind of like the control I get from cutting my own. Plus it's less stuff to have to store. But I'm gonna cut different widths of this. You know, you can probably see here, this one's just a little bit wider than this one. And I'm gonna cut little, strips of this in different widths, probably no more than two or three different uh, sizes. And I got four blades to cover front and back, so I'm gonna have to cut a fair amount of these. And uh, then we'll show you what we're doing with these, but you get the idea here with cutting the tape. So I will say, see okay. you in a minute. So we took the tape strips and we ran them along the propeller propellers and a slightly arcing some of these look black and blue that's because I I keep using the same tape over and over until it won't stick anymore um, but anyway um, you can see the stripes are in a slight arcing motion front and back um, some they might have been in a straight line I just put them in a slight curve let me get this off my hands and on the propeller because it gives it more of a visual interest um, and this is where we're going to take our XF64 and we're going to spray this over that. And then we're gonna pull those stripes of tape off afterwards. So I'm not gonna bore you with the spraying. I will tell you it's XF64. I'm thinning it with Mr. Rapid Thinner because I don't want it to get have a long time to dry and seep under that tape, okay? So I'm spraying it from kind of far away. It's gonna be, oh, three coats or so. And then after that, I am once again going to spray it with a clear X-22. So, we'll see you again shortly. All right, step uh, whatever we're at here. I took the tape strips off and hit it again with a clear coat. And uh, here it is. It doesn't look great yet, does it? It doesn't look awesome, but we do see the stripes of the different color where the different laminates were done. And this is going to be step one of the two steps of magic. Gonna take the oil paint here. Now you don't have, a lot of people swear by Windsor & Newton, some say uh, Master's Touch, whatever it is, but I just buy whatever the, the local hobby shop has. So I just got this Master's Touch oil color. Um, 
and it, I don't know if the watercolor paints will do this the watercolor paints will do the same or not but I just I know something that works for me and I tend to stick with it and what I do is I put it on a little bit of cardboard I just take a little bit off of here you gotta squeeze pee out of these things sometimes especially when you live in hell's armpit and everything dries up real quick um, and I just put it on the cardboard and the reason being is because it'll dry it'll the cardboard will take that linseed oil or whatever they've got this stuff made liquidy with out and it'll dry faster when you use it so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a brush this is about I'm gonna say here's a finger for comparison yes maybe what do you think an eighth of an inch wide and it's got pretty soft bristles on it and there's no particular reason it's on an angle that's just this is the brush that was handy and I'm just gonna get a little bit of that paint on here I'm gonna brush it off to where there's a little bit left and then I'm going to, uh, well, let me zoom in here. Maybe you can see a little better what I'm up to. And I'm just going to brush in the same direction to kind of make it look like grains in here. And I'm just going to keep on brushing it until it blends. Now you see, it kind of looks like it's turning the whole thing brown. And if it does that, just keep on brushing. You might rub it with a little bit of paper towel Kinda, but always keep it in the same direction. That's the big thing. And now it's got a little bit more by. It's a little more tied together than the others. You see that this top blade up here versus this one. You see the difference. So I'm going to do that with the front and back of each of these, just a little bit. And that's why I brush most of it off. It's easy to get carried away and accidentally have too much on there. And I'm just going to do each blade like that. Keep it going in the same direction. And you're going to see very fine lines in this. If you do it right. It takes a little practice. You're not going to get it right the first try. But if you've done a few propellers, you're going to feel like a very old hat at this. Like you really know what you're doing. And uh, just keep on going. Same direction. Always a back and a forth. So you don't want to go like back, you don't mind this, but what you don't want to do is do this and then go up and down. Some people like to curve it with the blade. That's fine. Like I said, I'm not, I am strictly an amateur, so I'm not going to offer any expert advice on something I'm certainly not an expert at. So you can see the one blade that has not been done. It's pretty stark brown and tan. Then you look at the others and they just look much better blended. So that's the first step in the what I call the magic step of the propeller painting. So I'm going to finish the back of this thing and that one front blade, and then I'll be right back with you for the final step. That's the last step, and that's putting on the clear yellow or clear orange. It's your choice. Um, you can see the propeller is done on both sides. That that raw umber oil blended these two together, these two colors together, a little more subtly, so it looks better. Let me get it back in some light where you can see better. Well, it's about the best light I can get. And um, I'm going to thin this with Mr. Leveling Thinner because I do want this to dry slowly. Uh, the key thing on this is that, um, is that I'm going to make it really thinnish. Um, you don't want to have too much at once on this clear color. Um, it's better to build it up till you find what you like because it's a, once you got it on there, it's really going to be a problem to get it off. But you can always add more as you go. So I'm going to coat this with the clear yellow and then we'll take one last look at it. If and I can find my okay, remote. Here we go. So we took some gray plastic, just plain old gray looking plastic, and made a reasonably woodish looking propeller out of it. Um, step by step, I hope that helps you out. Now there are guys who are better at this, um, but this is, you know my third world war one fighter i've done so it's probably about my fourth or fifth attempt at making wood but for now this will do the job for me now when we get to the wing spars the wing braces we're going to do these a little different uh then we're going to do the propeller and uh we'll get to that shortly um something i want to point out though you'll see a lot of people painting knot holes in things um if you've worked with wood you'll understand why you're not going to see big giant knot holes on these things it's a compromise to the structural integrity of these 
propellers, braces, whatever. Um, a little one here and there's gonna look pretty, it looks pretty legit, but realist, I mean, here I am talking about realism when I've got this amateur looking propeller, but you get the idea. Um, these were pressed laminate, or not laminate, laminated wood, multiple layers to make these propellers. So you're not gonna want something that's turning, uh, you know, nearly 3000 revolutions per minute taking the, the brunt of the airplane around with them to have uh, a big old knot hole that can't be uh, holding together when it needs to be. So here's the rest of the thing in uh, its current state so far. Um, this is also my first attempt at doing lozenge decals and I think they came out okay. Um, if you look in really close, you can see where I gotta trim some of this, uh, some of this overhang, but that's not a big deal that you've all done that before but if I can get this camera sorry for the seasick you're about to get I'm gonna try to zoom in here and see if I can get you a look inside um, maybe I can pull up a flashlight and get that in there but I did the cockpit already uh, you can kind of see in there this thing's got a lot of for a little 148 scale kit it's got a lot of detail in there you can see the tubing for the frame uh, the rope, because sometimes they just didn't have seat belts, so they would just tie themselves to the frame with rope. Uh, either way, no parachute. <laughs> but uh, you can kind of see what's going on in there. It's not the best wood in the world, but it kind of gets the, the point across in there. So, But on the body, on the fuselage, I used Gundam paint, so I didn't want this to look like metal, uh, nor did I want it to look like plastic. So I think the Gundam paint actually does a pretty decent job of looking more like the fabric that would be on there. Um, or the painted wood actually on the sides uh, and then this would be the uh, fabric on the wings which is why they made great fires when they got shot um, it does have a pretty decent little engine supplied with it there's a lot of nice detail up in here that you can't see kind of like a like a bomber you know but you'll know you didn't do it but anyway here it is so far and uh, here's our little propeller with it so so far it's coming together okay We'll see how it looks when it's done, and we'll talk to you all in just a little bit about doing the wing spars. Okay, so these wing braces, uh, they start out the same step. I put the coat of the wood deck tan, and um, then the X-22 clear over it like this. Now where we're gonna skip a step here um, is gonna be the laminating. Um, so what I'm gonna do next, is I'm gonna go right to the uh, XF-64, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, put a drop of it down right here. Uh, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that on the camera, so let me put another one where you can see. I'll put it right here. Just a drop there. I'm gonna get the smallish brush here. This one's, I'd say, about a sixteenth of an inch. Here's a finger for reference. About a sixteenth of an inch. And this is where, you know, a lot of people try to brush paint with the Tamina. It just doesn't work out well because it, uh, doesn't cover perfectly and everything. This is going to be kind of to your advantage here because what we're going to do now with this Tamiya paint is after we've uh, unloaded most of it from the brush is lightly, very lightly, um, start brushing it on here like so. Just very lightly and you can see it's leaving lines and that's what I'm kind of looking for here. You gotta be quick with this stuff though because it dries pretty darn fast. So let's bring it back over here. And let's, again, keeping it in the same direction, back and forth, forth and back, whichever you choose. And you can let it get a little heavier in some spots than the other to give it a little more of a natural woody look. And you can see it's kinda not looking awesome right now, but this is actually what we're looking for right now. Again, loading the brush up. Ooh, let me get that big ass hairy palm out of your way. Oh, hairy palm. Boy, the jokes that could come out of that. Um, and again, we're just going to, to be brushing this. Same direction. Back and forth. Getting most of this off of there. Doing it again here. We're gonna call that done for now. Let's, that one will be fine. And I'm gonna do it on the other ones and then I'll come right back. Okay. So we've got the clear and the, uh, we got the clear coat over the um, two shades of the brown colors, the wood deck tan and the XF64 red brown. 
Now, some of you are noticing on these inner braces, you see the little rivets and the fitting here um, that are not present on the wing spars, the wing braces. You see, it's just wood. Um, truth be told, these were actually, this is actually uh, probably a canvas cover or something over the metal tube. Um, and those would probably be painted the lozenge color of the wings or maybe you know, the color of the fuselage or something, I don't know. But uh, since it's under the wing, no one's, and at this scale, no one's really going to notice. I'm going to take a little artistic license and try to make it a little more to look at by making these wood as well. So um, is it historically accurate? No. Um, normally, does that drive me crazy? Yes. But like I said, this is going to be under the wing. It's going to barely be noticeable, and it's just going to be, you know, a little bit more visual impact but not quite enough to draw you in and notice the, the inaccuracy of it so I'll put a, a drop of the uh, mineral spirits back on this uh, old paint to bring it back to life and I'm gonna be extra careful to make sure I unload the brush on this because um, these are smaller and again I'm just going to same direction back and forth forth and back uh, get the wood color on these and you can see it's starting to look like wood grain and less like different shades of paint on it so I'm gonna finish these again and then I'll hit them with the yellow coat and show you what it looks like when it's okay, all done so here we are we got the uh, got the uh, spars done over here our wing braces whatever you want to call them they look uh, pretty decent. I probably will end up painting these or something because that's just kind of bothering me. I don't know. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. We'll see how it feels uh, by the time I get to that stage of the build. But uh, you're going to see the spars looking at uh, the uh, wing brace or wing spar, whatever it's properly called there. Looking a little more like wood than it was. And uh, I think the propellers turned out pretty fair. Whoops. Let me try that without, well, let me just use my daggone fingers. You have to look at my thumbs and everything here. There you go. I don't like the way it focuses on my fingers, but there's the propeller. Looking pretty decent, I'd say. So, uh, it's got a spinner, so it doesn't matter that these lines don't come all the way up in there because it's going to have a spinner on it that's going to cover that up anyway. But uh, there it is in its current state, looking more like a wooden propeller than it is a uh, plastic so anyway we'll see y'all next time i hope this helped you out and uh we'll talk to you next time